and the research by other scientists encouraged me to start developing solutions to utilize the potential of the immune system to treat serious diseases. And visionaries and entrepreneurs, they founded the immunotherapy company BioNTech with the goal of reducing the suffering of people all around the world. Decades of research and development of the mRNA technology led to the first mRNA-based COVID vaccine based on BioNTech's proprietary technology. Dear Aslam, dear Uyghur, you're interrupting your first vacation since the start of the pandemic to join us here today. This is very, very kind of you. The stage is yours. Dear Holm, thank you for your kind introduction. You and your team's support in the past months and for having us today. And uh, it, it is a pleasure for us uh, to interrupt our pseudo vacation, actually. Dear Dr. Tedros, uh, Dr. Kenga Zong, President von der Leyen, dear Dr. Hoyer, Dr. Moeti, and Dr. Sussman, we are more than grateful to be part of the joint efforts of the Eradicate Malaria Initiative. Rest assured that we are well aware of the responsibility of this task. Our motivation is high. Malaria is a dire disease that affects more than 200 million people worldwide every year. The worst affected being young children who have no immunity against the pathogen. As a company founded by medical doctors, we are committed to reducing the suffering of people around the world. We are committed to bringing our innovations to those who need them most. Thus, malaria is an obvious next mission for us. Why now? Well, because the time is right, the response to the pandemic has shown that science and innovation can make a difference when stakeholders work together towards a common goal and with joint willpower. We are in a good starting position. Firstly, we can build on decades of malaria research funded by international organizations of which the most active ones support this initiative. Thus, our understanding of the biology of the malaria pathogen and how it evades the immune system's defense forces is continuously growing. Second, we have conceptual evidence, evidence that some malaria vaccines can protect at least for a couple of months, encouraging development of even more potent vaccines with durable pro protection also against infection. And third, there is enabling technology now mRNA technology that after 20 years development has been validated as a robust vaccine platform by the baptism of fire of the COVID-19 pandemic, validated for efficacy, safety, feasibility of broad distribution can be enlisted now. All this we believe will provide tailwind for our mission to eradicate malaria to develop a prophylactic mRNA vaccine, which is safe and efficacious, and to develop sustainable supply solutions to distribute it broadly. In front of us are grand tasks. They encompass identifying suitable vaccine antigen candidates, early stage, stage studies in Europe for safety evaluation, followed by setup of large-scale clinical trial structures with the support of the Africa CDC and the WHO to conduct efficacy trials on the Afri African continent, and lastly, set up of vaccine supply solutions that are sustainable and regionally compatible, so that if our vaccine would be approved and recommended, we could ensure sustainable supply. It may sound impossible, to achieve this within a few years. However, as a great man once said, as Nelson Mandela said, it always seems impossible until it's done. We are committed to do, to do together. Ugo, may I hand over? Thank you, Aslan, and thank you, everyone, for the trust in us. <coughs> Let me shortly repeat the goals of our malaria project. 
We want to develop a safe, well-tolerated, and highly effective mRNA-based malaria vaccine with a durable protective immunity. That's our first goal. The second goal is, once approved, we want to ensure a sustainable supply of our mRNA vaccine from the African continent. So how do, you, how do we want to accomplish this extremely ambitious goals? First, we need to get a deep understanding of the challenges and come up with strategies and ideas to overcome these challenges. Let me start with science. So what are the scientific challenges? Why it is so difficult to make, to develop a successful malaria vaccine? We believe that the key challenge for malaria vaccine development is that the malaria parasite circumvents recognition by the immune system. After the mosquito bite, the malaria pathogen migrates from the skin to the liver and invades liver cells. In this early phase, the pathogen has established multiple mechanisms to remain invisible to the immune system. It multiplies in the liver and leaves the liver cells after about a week. Then it invades blood cells and starts to multiply in large numbers. This is the first time when the infection becomes symptomatic and the immune system starts to intervene. However, it is too late to stop the pathogen, to stop the disease. Our goal is to develop a vaccine which makes the malaria parasite visible and attackable by the immune system from the very beginning when it is most vulnerable. We will not only test vaccines with previously known antigen, antigens, but we believe we can do better job for vaccine design. We plan to discover new antigens which might be more suitable for vaccine development. We will engineer our mRNA vaccine in a way to induce strong and durable immune response, just as we did in the vaccine against coronavirus. We want to activate different layers of defense against this pathogen, antibodies that neutralize the pathogen and inhibit uptake, CD4 T cells that can detect the pathogen invasion as early as possible, and CD8 T cells that precisely eliminate infected cells if the pathogen does manage to invade liver cells. For this objective, we will collaborate with world-class experts, such as Malaria Eradicate Foundation advisors, BMGF and EU-funded researchers, WHO and African Union CDC scientists, and many others. We had already productive meetings with various experts and are excited about ideas and collaboration opportunities. We want not only evaluate safety and immunogenicity, but also want to measure very early on protection in malaria challenge studies with human volunteers. So we plan for success from the very beginning. The second goal of our malaria project is to set up intelligence and sustainable mRNA manufacturing sites using modern digital technologies. This objective is part of our overall strategy to enable people around the world to manufacture our vaccines. The strategy incorporates transferring knowledge and technology. We started to evaluate options to set up end-to-end -end manufacturing capacities on the African continent, either on our own or with our partners. We plan to co-locate novel mRNA production sites with technology transfer hubs under development by WHO and in alignment with the African CDC. These manufacturing sites could in principle produce various types of mRNA vaccines. mRNA vaccines not only against malaria, but also against other different infectious diseases. We believe that this could allow long-term sustainable operation of the site. So to repeat the how, science, collaboration of many stakeholders and sustainable technology transfer are crucial for the success of this project. If we work together, we will enable that our innovations become available to those who need them most. And there are other challenges ahead. 
Durable success will require man, many other things, as regulatory alignment, supportive policies, building up an ecosystem that not, not only allows clinical testing and manufacturing, but also vaccine supply and pharmacovigilance. It requires coordination across organizations and nations and building the infrastructure to manufacture and distribute doses. We are committed to this effort, effort and I'm grateful that this program has so many significant supporters. Thank you. Thank you very much, dear Aslam. Thank you very much, dear Urua. Um, this gave a brilliant overview and um, knowing a little bit now how Biontech works, we already know that with this aspiration, you are probably going to achieve it and this will one more time make this world a better place. Thank you very much to, for putting your ambition in the fight against this deadly disease that has really been neglected by so many pharmaceutical and vaccinology efforts over the last decades. It is my pleasure to hand over to President von der Leyen. President von der Leyen has been an important promoter of the EU initiatives on fighting malaria. And she is also, as some of you may not know, a medical doctor. President von der Leyen, please, the stage is yours. Dear Dr. Tedros, dear President Hoyer, dear Dr. Özlem Türeci, dear Professor Ur Shahin, distinguished guests, the history of science is made of long periods of slow progress, followed by great breakthroughs and scientific revolutions. Our fight against malaria is a case in point. For decades, science has worked hard to eradicate malaria. And the European <coughs> Union has been a proud partner in this work. We have supported tens of malaria research projects, ranging from diagnostics to treatments, from prevention to vaccines. And in the last 20 years, the number of malaria victims was cut by more than half. And still, more than 400,000 people die of malaria every year. Two thirds of them are children under the age of five. But finally, a breakthrough may be at hand. We are witnessing the start of a revolution in medical science, the revolution of messenger RNA. In these months, the whole world has seen the power of the mRNA technology, pioneered by BioNTech and others. And you, dear Özlem Türeci and Ur Shahin, you have cut the time needed to develop a new vaccine from 10 years to 10 months. And thanks to this, billions of doses of a COVID-19 vaccine are being produced for Europe and the world. And the mRNA technology can be a game changer in the fight against other diseases too, including malaria. A safe and effective malaria vaccine has long been an elusive target, but this could change now. And this is where today's initiative comes into play. Today, we're joining forces towards a breakthrough in malaria vaccine development. The European Commission and the European Investment Bank are throwing their weight behind the global effort to develop mRNA vaccines against malaria. We will do so through our infectious diseases finance facility. And we will work together with BioNTech and with some of the main global health actors. Eradicating malaria is a realistic goal. And now we know that it can be achieved already in this generation. Indeed, the time is now. This initiative is part of a broad engagement by the European Union for Health in Africa and in the developing world. 
Africa today imports 99% of its vaccines. And our African partners want to end this dependency. And we want to support them achieve this goal. Last May, at the Global Health Summit in Rome, we announced a Team Europe initiative on manufacturing vaccines in Africa. This initiative is backed by 1 billion euros from the European budget and the European Investment Bank. And some European countries have announced that they will also join forces. Our very first goal is to bring new technologies to Africa. We're working together with pharmaceutical companies that successfully manufacture in Europe. If we join forces, mRNA vaccines can be produced inside the African continent. But to create sustainable structures, we need to look beyond COVID-19 vaccines. The new plans in Africa could be shifted to production of new vaccines against malaria or against tuberculosis. And of course, this is a project that takes years to be set up. But if we succeed, we will not only be better equipped for the next pandemic, we also invest into an African continent finally free from malaria. And I'm proud that Europe is part of this endeavor. Thank you all for being here and for your essential contribution to eradicate malaria. Thank you very much, um, President von der Leyen, for these extremely supportive words of the European Commission. It's now an honor to turn over to Dr. Tedros. I trust the Director General of the World Health Organization has just landed well in Kuwait and um, might be ready to speak to us. Dr. Tedros, in case you can hear us, please unmute yourself. Probably not. So we will wait for you to become oh, I'm sorry, this is, hi, good afternoon. This is Katerina. I'm just here um, to okay. listen for Dr. Tedros. He is still, he has not yet. Uh, okay. Thanks, Katarina. Thanks a lot. And it's an honor to welcome you on that live stream. So this Thank is you. now an even bigger honor to hand over to Dr. Moeti. Dr. Moeti is the WHO Regional Director for Africa, and she is indeed a passionate promoter for health equity in Africa and beyond. Chidi. Um, please share with us your remarks. Okay, yeah, thanks very much, um, Holm, for that warm introduction. Uh, President van der Leyen, van der Leiden, Dr. John Gangasong, I saw John is, present, is represented by our colleague, uh, Dr. Nikes, uh, Dr. Tureji and uh, Sahin, Dr. Hoya, Dr. Mark Susman, our colleague and friend from the Gates Foundation. I saw my colleague, uh, Dr. Sumia Swaminathan has joined and uh, Pedro Alonso and all uh, partners and colleagues. So I'd like to greet everyone who's joined us for this event today. It's with really huge excitement that I join you, distinguished participants, partners and colleagues for the announcement of this groundbreaking and truly revolutionary initiative on the development and production of an mRNA-based vaccine for malaria in Africa. I'd like to thank you all very much for your involvement in creating this truly transformative opportunity for moving towards malaria eradication in Africa. Between 2010 and 2019, more than $29 billion were invested in fighting malaria in the WHO African region, meaning mainly Sub-Saharan Africa plus Algeria. And in the same period, nearly four and a half million people lost their lives to this preventable and treatable disease. Each year, families and communities 
deal with the heartbreak and the outrage, outrage really, of seeing almost 300,000 children die of malaria. I'm convinced that our collective actions after this event will contribute hugely to stopping those tra tragic outcomes, as well as stopping the loss to African economies of 1.3% of annual growth. Since the Abuja Declaration on Rollback Malaria in Africa two decades ago, we have kept alive the dream of a malaria-free Africa. We have dreamed of having a vaccine that could prevent malaria in at least 75% of people who receive it, especially children. We're happy to see several malaria vaccines at several stages of development. And in October, the RTSS vaccine will be subjected to rigorous evaluation for possible policy recommendation by WHO experts after having been <clears throat> piloted uh, involving hundreds of thousands of children in three countries in the African region. So that was an important step that's giving us a lot of hope. But as it's already been said, it would be wonderful to have a, a vaccine with a stronger platform, more effectiveness, more efficiency. Uh, and here we are today with BioNTech to announce a project on the deployment of mRNA technology to develop and produce a malaria vaccine in Africa. I'd like to thank our two scientists from BioNTech for your passion. I've followed your work and your statements as you have worked on the COVID-19 vaccine. Thank you very much for agreeing to avail this, and thank you, Holm, for your work and um, the European Commission for supporting this work, for making this opportunity for malaria. So starting by supporting vaccine production for COVID-19, accelerating progress towards another dream of producing vaccines, another essential tools to address other health priorities on the continent, putting Africa and Africans in the driving seat as African politicians have very strongly not only stated, but acted to turn into a reality in the context of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. I thank you all for coming together to put your resources, your scientific knowledge, and your will to act together in order to make this progress for African people, African children, the African continent. We at the WHO Regional Office for Africa, working with our colleagues in Geneva, will work with this initiative and partnership with the expectation of rewriting the ancient history of malaria and its related deaths in Africa. We stand ready to mobilize member states to support the entire spectrum of R&D of the malaria mRNA vaccine, including the early engagement and support of national regulatory authorities for the role that they need to play. As always, we'll support the process of country policy adoption if and when a recommended mRNA malaria vaccine is available. And I am very hopeful that through your work, through this collective effort, it will be available. We'll also provide management and logistical capacity building to countries as they prepare for the deployment to ensure universal health coverage with available malaria tools, including the malaria mRNA vaccine in the future, which I'm very hopeful and even confident will be developed through our collective effort. So I'd like to thank you all very much once again for joining us for this important event. I wish us all fruitful discussions and look very much forward to working with you on this urgent, transformative and life-saving effort. Thank you very much for your attention and home, I hand over back to you. Thank you very much, dear Dr. Moeti. The big work is still ahead of us and uh, we'll have a lot to do together with WHO AFRO when this vaccine will start hitting the road and before as it goes uh, through the clinic with hopefully EDCTP's strong support in the African region. Um, it is my pleasure now to welcome Dr. Chong Nikengasong. Dr. John is the director of the Africa Centers for Disease Control, who has just launched the Partnership for African Vaccine Manufacturing. This will ensure that the enabling factors, such as a regulatory environment and policy transfer, as well as country coordination are in place 
to get the vaccines from factories into the arms of African citizens and beyond. And what we do here today, we consider it as a part of the partnership for African vaccine manufacturing. Dr. John, it will be a pleasure. Please um, share your remarks with the group. Now we lack Dr. John. He is actually, he has been there before. He's with the government of Tanzania in the moment. So since we anyway are flexible here and I am seeing that Dr. Hoyer is already buttoned up and um, looks forward to speaking, I would like to hand over to the president of the European Investment Bank. EIB is actually the largest multilateral bank in the world by balance sheet size. Not many people know this. And wherever in the world we are traveling in Africa and beyond, you find an extremely buttoned up and well-organized EIB organization that is very impactful in its proceedings without EIB the malaria programs of the European Commission wouldn't have been executed in the way they are, and we won't have the project we are speaking about today. Dr. Hoyer, the stage is yours. Thank you so much for these very, very kind words. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it's a real pleasure and honor for me to be here with you today at an event that could potentially mark an historical turning point in the long journey of humanity to fight malaria. It still constitutes a major health threat today and as it has for millennia. It still takes too many lives each year, in particular those of children. The current pandemic should serve as a reminder that global cooperation and investment in innovation are key in the fight against other infectious diseases. As a multilateral institution, it is the duty of the European Investment Bank to be active part of the global response. I have somebody knocking on my ears. Yeah, Dr. Hoyer, give the technicians in Geneva one second and accept our apologies. No problem. Yeah, this probably has to do with the hiccup we had a moment ago. Can I get a go from Chris? Yes, okay. Dr. Hoyer, sorry for interrupting you. Oh, thank you very much. So I just wanted to say that the current pandemic should serve as a reminder that global cooperation and investment in innovation are key in the fight against other infectious diseases. As a multilateral uh, institution, it is our duty to be an active part of a coordinated global response. And this is why we seek to cooperate very closely with our colleagues from the European Commission, WHO, the UN, and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. This is also why we aim to tap into and enhance the innovation potential of private companies. In the current crisis, Biotech companies are and will continue to be the heroes. They manage to accelerate vaccine development and production across the world at an incredible speed. The scientific achievements of the recent months have been truly mind boggling and we are in your debt, Dr. Sayana, Dr. Turechi, and all the BioNTech team. The current pandemic also shows us that we need to better prepare for future outbreaks. As a contribution to this, we at the EU Bank the, in partnership with the European Commission, have adopted tailored approaches to meet pressing needs in the health sector. Indeed, over the past years, the EIB has supported activities in the health sector, both in Africa and in other continents, in particular in Africa and, of course, in Europe anyway. Since 2015, a close to 2 billion euros combined support has targeted 70 biotech and medtech projects in various areas of life sciences, ranging from new drug discovery for rare diseases, treatments in immuno-oncology, the development of more accurate surgical implants or more sophisticated diagnostic tools. More recently, we also invested in the upscaling of manufacturing capacities and in technology transfers in Europe, as well as in developing countries. One specific area of focus is infectious diseases. Even beyond COVID-19, they affect millions of people across the world, most of most the most vulnerable living in low-income countries. So to support innovative solutions, the EIB and the European Commission have developed infectious diseases funds facility 
This facility was set up in 2014 in the middle of the Ebola crisis. We needed an instrument that could mobilize funding for a sector that struggles to attract sufficient financial support despite the huge societal impact. Since its inception, this facility has supported more than 20 impactful and innovative projects with a total of finances of more than a half a billion euros. With these resources, companies have been developing vaccines, treatments, and diagnostic solutions against various diseases, including malaria, through the EU Malaria Fund. It is thanks to the combination of the IDFFs under Innofin and the European Fund for Strategic Investments that the EIB was able to support BioNTech vaccine development and manufacturing in 2020. Uh, as was said before, as an anecdote, as, as the EIB and BioNTech have already worked together in 2018 and 19 in relation to mRNA-based cancer treatments, both teams were in a very good position to quickly enter into discussions on COVID-19 from the very start of 2020, when the virus was still main, mainly limited to China. And this saved precious time. I'm proud that BioNTech trusted us, that they, I'm proud that they could count on us and on our incredible life science team here in Luxembourg at this critical time. As we speak, EIB teams are focusing their attention on vaccine production facilities, active pharmaceutical ingredient production, and fill and finish capacities globally. Besides these direct efforts in R&D and production capacity upscaling, the European Commission and the EIB have ensured support to COVAX, aiming at fair and equitable access to COVID-19 vaccines worldwide and direct support to countries for vaccine acquisition. Ladies and gentlemen, excellencies, the main ingredients for good pandemic preparedness are adequate production infrastructures, free circulation of essential goods, and qualified personnel. Keeping these lessons in mind, I'm proud to announce the EIB's full support to the scientific and business communities, in particular to BioNTech, of course, in tackling one of the most widespread and deadly infectious diseases affecting developing countries, malaria. mRNA technology developed by a BioNTech specialist has shown itself to be a game changer in the fight against COVID-19. The EU Bank will continue to focus on overcoming long-standing threats to public health and to support initiatives like the one proposed by BioNTech today. If mRNA can revolutionize the malaria vaccine technologies, we stand ready to provide the necessary support for its development and subsequently for its production on the African continent. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Dr. Hoyer. So since we are now already trying to track down two distinguished participants, some were um, one in, um, in Kuwait and um, one in Tanzania, um, let me bridge um, by um, uh, saying that um, with the advancement of the BioNTech malaria vaccine candidate on this proven technology platform, the EU Malaria Fund, which has been a cooperation between EIB and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and others, has successfully accomplished its mission earlier than expected. Therefore, on June 30 this year, its investment period has ended. With final disbursements occurring until September 30th, the fund has successfully initiated more than two dozens of novel scientific approaches to the fight against malaria, like the project we are talking about today, and financed many innovative companies under this scheme. Moving on is really closing a circle and um, going all the way to Seattle. Mark Sussman, Dr. Mark Sussman is uh, the CEO of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, who has been a restless warrior in the fight of malaria for many decades. Mark, please be so kind to take the stage. Great. Well, thank you, Holm, and, and thank you to all the partners here today. It's actually uh, an amazing moment to see how many uh, different partners we have uh, that we've been working together for so long, from the European Investment Bank to the European Commission, of course, AFRO, the Africa CDC, uh, the WHO, um, 
and BioNTech all coming together around this new shared goal and commitment around the potential for an mRNA vaccine for malaria that can also be manufactured and scaled up in Africa. And I think this really is a historic moment. Uh, we may look back at this moment and see it as a transformative uh, pivot point in the fight against malaria. At the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, we've obviously been deeply involved for many, many years uh, in this. And uh, it's wonderful to be able to be at an event where people are talking openly about the possibility of eradication of malaria. This is an issue that has been debated uh, furiously about whether it is the right word to use, the right term to use, the right context. We've always been very cautious uh, about explaining what we mean, but our ambition has been eradication, but it's been underpinned by a view and a need that what we need are transformative tools in therapeutics, in diagnostics, in new forms of bed nets, and absolutely a different kind of more effective vaccine. Those are the things that we will need if we are going to meet that ambitious goal in the decades to come. And now with the promise and prospect of mRNA, which we've seen operate so successfully in the fight against COVID and which we've already been partnering with BioNTech uh, to think about its potential for HIV and, and tuberculosis, uh, we can see the real possibility of that lying ahead. And so uh, you can be assured of our continued strong commitment uh, to work in partnership uh, with everyone uh, on this event, with the, the European Commission, with BioNTech, with the EIB, with the WHO, with the Africa CDC, uh, both on the mRNA uh, vaccine potential uh, and in the wider uh, efforts to continue to tackle malaria. But more broadly, I also wanted to say a couple of words about the importance of developing that kind of manufacturing capacity in Africa, uh, because we've seen it in the historic announcement uh, last week that BioNTech made in partnership with uh, BioVac and, and others in uh, South Africa around a pot potential mRNA vaccine uh, production for COVID. And we know and we've seen the challenges uh, that we've had that Africa does need stronger self-sufficiency in vaccine manufacturing. And uh, Dr. Moetti and Dr. Nkenasong and others have been uh, pioneering strong voices and leaders around that. At the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, we have uh, spent many, many years trying to invest in supporting the developing, uh, developing country ma vaccine manufacturing capacity. We've worked across India, Indonesia, South Africa, Senegal, Bangladesh. And it's given us uh, both, um, I think, strong expertise and, and understanding that this is absolutely possible and necessary, but also that we need to think through the entire ecosystem of thinking about demand generation, about the importance of the capital provision, about the strong regulatory framework we need to put in place. And we will need all of these coming together around this current initiative uh, in order to make sure that it is successful. And again, uh, I think you can count on our commitment on this, both as a, a malaria platform, but also hopefully as a platform that shows the potential for acting together uh, against other deadly diseases like TB and HIV for Africa and beyond. So in conclusion, uh, let me again just thank uh, all the other uh, participants for today's event. Uh, reassert uh, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation's full support and commitment to today's historic announcement and to all the work that will uh, be needed to, to go on at the country level, um, at the company level, at the, on the scientific side, on the regulatory side going forward. Uh, and with thanks home to you for putting together today's event and, and pulling together such a distinguished uh, group of participants that uh, we hope we can indeed look back at today and say, we were part of a historical turning point in the fight against malaria, one of the oldest and greatest scourges against humanity. So thank you. Thank you very much, Mark. It is now an honor to hand over to the Director General of the World Health Organization, um, who um, has a frenzy travel schedule these days and um, we truly appreciate um, that Dr. Tetros is taking the time to share his thoughts on today's announcement by BioNTech and uh, the larger malaria and development community with us. 
Dr. Tedros, the stage is yours. Mr. Holm Keller, Professor Sahin and Puruse, dear colleagues and friends, good afternoon. I'm sorry I can't join you live today for this very exciting announcement. As many of you know, malaria is a topic very close to my heart. I started my career as a malaria researcher and I wrote my PhD thesis on the effect of dams and reservoirs on malaria transmission in Ethiopia. Eradicating this ancient disease has long been a personal dream of mine. And we must remember that we have made incredible progress. Since 2000, malaria deaths have fallen by more than half, and we have succeeded in eliminating malaria from many parts of the world. WHO has now certified 40 countries as malaria free, most recently China, which reported 30 million cases a year in the 1940s. But globally, progress has stalled at an unacceptably high level with more than 200 million cases and 400,000 deaths every year. Most are children and pregnant women in Africa. And the COVID-19 pandemic has not helped. A WHO survey of 105 countries last year showed that 46% of them reported disruptions in malaria diagnosis and treatment. The full impact of the pandemic on malaria may not be known for some time, but it's clear we have a lot of work to do to realize our vision of a malaria-free world. For starters, we must make much better use of the tools we have today to prevent, detect, and treat malaria. But WHO Strategic Advisory Group on Malaria Eradication has been clear that we will need new tools to realize our vision of a malaria-free world, including new vaccines. For several decades, many major vaccine developers have gradually abandoned their attempts to develop malaria vaccines. But six years ago, the world's first malaria vaccine was approved. And two years ago, WHO and our partners began a pilot program to roll it uh, in Ghana, Kenya, and Malawi. More than 700,000 children have now received the vaccine, and the initial results are very promising. WHO will be reviewing the data in the coming months to consider a recommendation for wider youth. At the same time, we know that in future, we will need more and better vaccines. For that reason, I'm delighted that BioNTech has committed to developing an mRNA malaria vaccine in Africa. 18 months ago, most people outside the life sciences would have never heard of mRNA. But the very high efficacy of two mRNA vaccines for COVID-19 have shown the world just how powerful this technology could be against many diseases, including malaria. The pandemic has also demonstrated the urgent need to invest in scaling up local production capacity, especially in Africa. So I'm hopeful that this project will be a meaningful and long lasting contribution to ensuring our continent has a reliable supply of high quality, locally produced vaccines. Of course, the key to malaria eradication is partnership. And we're all very grateful that the European Union, the European Investment Bank, and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation have committed to investing in this very ex exciting project. My friends, mRNA technology is helping us to save lives from COVID-19, a disease that we have only known about for 19 months. Malaria has been with us for millennia. Eradicating it has been a long held but unattainable dream. 
but new technologies like mRNA are making what was once a fantasy a possibility. We still have a very long road to travel, but this is an ambitious and purposeful stride down that road. WHO remains committed to working and working with you, our partners, until we reach our destination, a world free of malaria. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Dr. Tedros, and we wish you excellent continuation of your proceedings with the government of Kuwait. BioNTech actually plans to co-locate its African manufacturing capabilities with the technology hubs under development by WHO and in alignment with the African manufacturing strategy convened and promoted by the Africa CDC. All of those initiatives aim at expanding the capacity of low and middle income countries to manufacture contemporary vaccines end to end and to scale up production to increase global access to these critical tools to bring current and future pandemics under control. With these words, allow me to thank our interpreters who have been so helpful to uh, translate this event into Arabic, Chinese, French, German, Hindi, Russian, Spanish, and Portuguese, and many, many thanks to the wonderful back office team at the World Health Organization, WHO in Geneva. It is now time to move over to our Q&A session. And again, may I ask all journalists who want to ask questions during this session to ensure that they have identified themselves with their full name and media you present in their Zoom screen name. If you have a question, please click the raise your hand button. I will then call out the name of the next journalist. If it is your turn, please then unmute your microphone, introduce your name and media and ask your question. You also have the option to write down your question in the Q&A chat. Kindly note that as time is limited, we will take as many questions as possible to allow the maximum number of journalists to be able to ask questions, please limit each intervention to one question. And also with your permission, once Dr. John Lekenga song manages to reconnect from Tanzania, we would briefly interrupt the Q&A and give him the opportunity to address this distinguished audience. So, time to get into the media work. May I ask Bettina from ARD, from German National Radio, um, to speak up first, please. Bettina? Uh -huh. Yeah, now you should hear me. We hear you very well. Thank you, Bettina. Okay. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you for that interesting conference. I'd like to know if you have already an idea of your African partners or countries where you're going to um, collaborate with. Um, I think it is um, fair to say, and I will hand this over to Dr. Sirk Pötting in a moment. Um, the company is traveling the continent in the moment and talking to intellectuals, to public service leaders, to physicians, to really conduct a due diligence. And um, also what's important to know is that um, we will work together with the Africa CDC on WHO, but Silk, the Chief Operating Officer of BioNTech should explain this to you, Silk. Yeah, thank you very much, Holm. Um, yeah, so the concept that we're envisioning to bring manufacturing to Africa is, is really to, to have modular production systems that we can co-locate, uh, as we said before, with the, um, with the WHO transfer hubs. So that means uh, there is some infrastructure that we need. So what we are developing right now and started the development and prototyping process is this like drug substance and drug product 
uh, containerized solution that we can build in Europe and then, then ship to African countries and then connect to the host uh, facilities. So in that sense, um, there, need to be, there needs to be some infrastructure on the ground that we need to connect to. For example, uh, we would need a septic fill and finish where you can um, uh, sterile uh, fill and finish the uh, fill the fill the vaccine into uh, into the glass vials or bags for for example uh, we need a workforce around we need certain warehouse conditions where we can put the containers and stuff like that so in that sense we are touring as home uh, alluded to we're touring the continent right now and see where where the where these specifications are met so and 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 everybody basically on the call is helping us to navigate this and and to find whether these uh, um, uh, prerequisites are either existent already or whether the gates foundation the who and all the other partners are actually needed uh, are in need to help to build up these infrastructure for example with uh, workforce training etc cetera, etc cetera. so there are a couple of uh, countries that come to mind that that are also envisioned already as, as WHO transfer hubs. And these would, of course, be uh, probably first choices, but we are not uh, at the end of this process. So while we are developing our prototypes and building this um, containerized manufacturing, um, we are actually um, uh, still discussing with the various countries and the organizations to find the best place. Thank you very much, um, dear Silk. I think uh, the next um, is Jan from AFP. Jan, would you please speak up? Hi, yes, can you hear me? Yes, you can, if you are louder, it doesn't harm. <coughs> yes, so I'm trying to talk as loud as possible. Uh, a question maybe to Dr. Sahin. Um, what especially from the whole development of the COVID vaccine uh, will you now be able to profit from while going to malaria? Is there anything uh, in the technology, in the way that you uh, work, uh, in the way that mRNA is now more accepted that, that makes it easier for you now to go forward? And a very short second one, the trial, will it be in Africa only or will it be in other countries as well? Thanks for the for the for the for the questions. So, uh, what we learned from the from the COVID nineteen program is um, that multiple mRNA vaccines can be tested in parallel to identify the candidate which works best uh, in in early clinical trials. And this is this is one of the concepts that we would like to apply because today it is not known uh, which targets are the most suitable ones. Yeah. And we will connect uh, target discovery, antigen discovery, with, uh, with preclinical and clinical testing of multiple candidates. The second aspect uh, is, of course, that we built up uh, now a huge safety database. End of this year, there will be more than 1 billion uh, uh, people who have received our vaccine, a huge safety database, which makes uh, the the technology uh, and the mRNA itself more acceptable. What we have also developed and continuing to develop is, is mRNA to develop conditions uh, that the mRNA can be transported at, at two to eight degrees. Uh, and we are also working on conditions to transport messenger RNA vaccines at room, room temperature. Uh, so the combination of this, of this logistical aspects as well as the scientific aspects, as well as the mode of action of mRNA vaccines, having strong antibody titers, allowing to get strong T cell responses, allowing to, to do repeated, repeated vaccinations and boosts, uh, are excellent prerequisites uh, to, to build on what is already known uh, about malaria vaccines. And, and if we can combine this existing knowledge and existing competence with what we can deliver, uh, we believe that there's a high likelihood for success. The second question is, uh, is about the clinical trials. We will do the clinical trials, most likely in multiple countries. Yeah, we will do for sure studies also in Germany, uh, but also, also in Africa. If we go to, towards, uh, towards efficacy trials, we might include other regions uh, where malaria is prevalent. Thank you very much, Ugo. Maybe just to add, um, the um, EDCTP um, 
headed by Dr. Michael Makanga, an agency of the European Union's member states and many other countries, which is the Clinical Trials Network in Africa, um, will be at our support and will help that um, the quality management system that EDCPP has built uh, with the support of DGRTD over the last years will come to play for a fast forward clinical development of the malaria candidate um, BioNTech is considering. So next question would be Patricia Weiss from, if I recall correctly, Reuters. Patricia? Yes, hello, thank you for taking my question. Um, could you give us an overview on the investment sum of the project and who will exactly be the financial partners and how big is their part, their financial in the project? Many thanks. Well, let me jump in here first and then more elaborate answers will come for more competent people than myself. Usually the development cost of a novel maxin is well above a billion euro. How much Biontech's upcoming malaria vaccine candidate will cost is absolutely unknown at this point in time. Um, Biontech will work on malaria and um, the end-to-end -end African manufacturing is something the company will initially fund from internal resources. The company warmly welcomes so the announcements from the European Commission, uh, from EIB, to co-finance the product development once the vaccine candidate enters late stage clinical development in Africa. So with that general sense, I don't know um, whether Öslem, Ugur or Silk would want to add to that. Ugur doesn't, Silk does. Yeah, I, I I would say a couple of words as Holm as Holm just um, uh, ex explained. So I think in order to also um, uh, do best what we do best what we can do best is actually develop and and, and produce this this vaccine. Uh, we said like uh, initially we will pre-fund uh, all of these activities or basically fund the activities. We'll start with the research. Uh, ASAP and we'll start with the production of prototypes, building uh, manufacturing units for Africa, etc. So that we can really gain speed on this on this on this effort. And I think uh, and then when it comes to like uh, more tangible uh, large scale trials and when it comes to like uh, more than one country that needs to be equipped with with the equipment and so on, uh, then we can turn to our partners and discuss how we how we best fund this. So initially it's really uh, we are very grateful that we have um, the partners uh, standing by to wait how this all develops and if we are getting somewhere and we see results and, and all of this is working uh, and there's a large scale, very large scale investment, then we can turn to the partners. So right now we want to start as quickly as possible and, and, and self-fund this. Uh, on the other hand, I think there's also funding on the site, uh, um, for example, by the Gates Foundation, by the EIB, uh, by the German government and so on. Uh, to to um, enable the infrastructure where we would like to put our um, um, uh, manufacturing units. As I mentioned before, there will be workforce development, there will be uh, regulatory training and, and regulatory um, uh, establishment, um, there will be fill and finish uh, investments at the sites, and all of this um, uh, will be done by the partners. And with that, I, I, I go back to home and maybe some other comments. Thank you very much, dear Silk. I, let me just iterate on that. This is a commitment we rarely ever see, and it shows one more time that Biontech is a very different company. Um, Biontech is, I think, the first vaccine developing company during the last three decades entering this field of malaria and trying to develop a vaccine at the time when most other major developers have closed down on their efforts on this disease. And getting started without really asking for somebody else to do something, but to say we can do by ourselves is a investment that can't be valued big enough. And I think all of us are here to applaud the vision 
of the company and its founders and the excellent team in Mainz, München and beyond for tackling this challenge, which is indeed very timely, an Olympic one. Um, let's move on to Mexico. Um, Raul, um, the stage is yours. Please unmute yourself. Hi. Yeah. Hello. Hello. So we are preparing a television program for TV UNAM, and therefore we would be interested in uh, the possibility of implementing similar programs for Latin America. And uh, we would like to know the point of view of um, politicians and as well the point of view of scientifics. So let's let move this over to Özlem and Ugo first and then open the floor. I, I can take this. Uh, so um, uh, in principle, uh, both scientifically as well as, well as technologically, uh, the approach of technology transfer and building um, uh, uh, clinical development programs and, and also uh, supply solutions in different uh, parts of the world for uh, diseases which are uh, not sufficiently addressed yet. This is something which can be replicated and uh, it's in our interest to replicate it also in other regions and other infectious diseases. We think that we will learn uh, a lot, uh, in particular in cooperation with all the experts which have been already introduced in this call, uh, how to uh, solve uh, what is in principle a challenge and uh, how to then also scale up uh, to different diseases and also to different regions. So this is a plan which will be rolled out once we have had a first uh, success with uh, malaria. Thank you very much, Aslam. Um, can I ask um, Sumya, the chief scientist of the World Health Organization, to also comment on this one, Dr. Sumya? Thank you very much, Hom, and congratulations to all involved in uh, today's announcement. I agree that it's a very momentous uh, occasion because we are bringing the latest in science and cutting edge technology to address one of the oldest uh, diseases of humankind and one that still kills far too many people every year. There is another infectious disease, tuberculosis, which could also benefit from the latest uh, technology and I'm very happy that, uh, that uh, the scientists in BioNTech are also interested in developing vaccines for, for TB. To come to the question on uh, Latin America, indeed, uh, the WHO would like to see this technology being diffused into those parts of the world which have inadequate uh, capacity for vaccine production, but also can benefit from this new technology to address the local health needs uh, of the region. And uh, we're looking at a concept of regional health security, because that's one of the lessons from the pandemic has been that it would have been easier to handle, uh, particularly with health products like vaccines and diagnostics, if the manufacturing uh, uh, production was more evenly spaced out around the world, um, it would have been much easier to have also equitable distribution and access to these products. So we're very much hoping that the concept of the WHO tech technology transfer hubs that we've announced first with mRNA, but we're, we're going to move on to other technologies like the subunit proteins and the adenoviral vectors that we would see not only in Africa, but also in Latin America, potentially in other regions, which currently uh, have inadequate uh, production capacity, that we will be able to see these hubs actually serve as training sites for countries to receive the technology to learn and to, to uh, train their workforce. Because here again, we're talking about a new technology and we don't have too many people in countries who uh, are experts in, in the manufacturing of mRNA and it's complex. So we need a whole dedicated program on workforce development, which we will work with BioNTech and other partners 
over the coming months to, uh, to take forward. And, and so I think uh, this type of uh, you know, private-public partnership with the WHO playing a, a coordinating uh, and a facilitating role can really be a game changer, not just for uh, the immediate, for COVID vaccines, for the malaria vaccine, but also the mRNA technology, I think, offers uh, a huge potential. Uh, and uh, as uh, Professor Sahin and Tureki have, uh, have shown their whole career and life and, and bio and tech has been spent on trying to develop cancer medicines. And we, we are also aware that biologics and monoclonal antibodies will play a big role in the future in the treatment of diseases. So for all of these reasons, I think this is a very good first step, but obviously needs to be followed up with, uh, with further actions to, to make this technology available to other regions and, and, and establish those, those hubs, including uh, Latin America as a priority region for the WHO. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sumya. I know this is a topic Philip would want to comment on. So, uh, Philip, Velkov from the Gates Foundation, please unmute yourself. And uh, thanks so much to all the participants and tremendous thanks to uh, uh, Dr. Thaslan Manogar for your leadership and vision. I think when we look at the tremendous burden that malaria causes uh, around the world, um, there, is a, uh, there is a fundamental new opportunity here. We know that the existing tools we have against malaria can save many lives, um, but they're not enough to eradicate. That's why at the Gates Foundation, we've been uh, exploring and investing in a range of potential approaches but a second generation vaccine, one that has high efficacy, uh, long duration and can work across uh, in all ages, is a, is, it would be a game changer. And uh, this is the best uh, chance that we have had to actually get to that tool. Um, I think one of the important things about malaria is how different it is from location to location and a different mix of tools may be needed uh, in different places. And so I think that's why the concepts that Dr. Sumia has just been discussing are, are, are so important uh, because we want to make sure that different countries have the opportunity and different regions have the opportunity to uh, have the appropriate mix of tools, uh, including something transformational like such a, uh, a second generation vaccine to be able to interrupt transmission regardless of the local context, regardless of the transmission intensity. So I, I uh, welcome uh, this announcement and I think it will be truly transformational in this fight against malaria and averting the tremendous burden it has. Over. Thank you very much, Philip, to Seattle. I have seen Dr. Hoyer raising his hand and nodding when um, uh, Sumia was speaking beforehand. So um, Dr. Hoyer, do you wanna um, add to the point on the global expansion of this um, topic beyond Africa? Well, of course, uh, we are ready to, uh, to consider also being active in other parts of the world. And indeed, Latin America is a region that needs to uh, get our attention maybe a little bit more than so far. But I was nodding when uh, I heard uh, Dr. Samuel and Dr. Sain before saying that, well, at least that's the way I interpret it, we should not underestimate the, the complexity of uh, vaccine productions some people believe you just send a couple of bottles of, of fluids, uh, liquid somewhere, and then pull them together, and, uh, and then you have a vaccine. It, it's a very, very demanding process. So the, the skills dimension is key in this context, and this also requires investment. Uh, we are pre presently supporting vaccine acquisition and uh, vaccination infrastructure, cold chain and vaccination centers, also Latin America. And we are in close coordination with the with our partners at the Inter-American Development Bank, uh, and I think indeed there is more that can be expected. Thank you very much, Dr. Hoyer. There has been a question uh, that was asked before on the regional strategy that um, the Africa Union and the Africa CDC um, have been developing. Um, Dr. Nisez, do you want to um, add a few comments on the regional strategy aspect of our important matter? 
No, uh, uh, thanks so much, uh, Om. Uh, really, congratulations. So, um, as Africa CDC Africa Union, we really welcome effort uh, by BioNTech to to develop um, this mRNA malaria vaccine, and also uh, support really um, our initiative to uh, start manufacturing some of the vaccine on the continent uh, to meet our uh, our aspirations. So, it's grateful for really. The, the kind of foundation for initiating this, um, what we call um, Eradicate Malaria Initiative. I, I think uh, I, I will repeat what uh, Dr. Sumia did, uh, did, did mention. This is really going to be a, a game changer in addition to uh, other infectious diseases of, um, of relevance on, on the continent, that include TB, malaria, and other, and other diseases that definitely they, we can leverage on this technology to be able to address them. I mean, it's clear that uh, we know that malaria kills more than 400,000 people a year, and mostly infants in, in Sub-Saharan Africa. That's data, that's the evidence, and that's actually substantiate the need of this uh, technology as well as uh, uh, really encouraging or commending the effort uh, that you are putting towards that. And also with the disruptions of the treatment due to COVID-19, these numbers are likely to increase. So I think, um, that's really, um, uh, uh, we, we appreciate that effort. So uh, the African Union, Africa CDC, through the partnership for Africa Vaccine Manufacturing Initiative really uh, take this as really a laudable effort and um, moving towards really, if we start even just we fill and finish, that's already a, a tremendous effort that would take us uh, to, to the next steps. So I think um, from this end, uh, really, um, we, we appreciate that effort and we're fully supportive and also um, leveraging on the current technology with the research hubs that has been currently been um, uh, um, uh, set across the five regions in collaboration with WHO and other partners, and then that transfer of technology and uh, will go a long way in addressing um, uh, some of these key public health questions through the, through the mRNA technology and then um, eradicate malaria program initiative. Thank you, and over to you all. Thanks a lot, um, uh, Dr. Nises. Um, Dr. Nises has asked um, us to accept that we keep his camera off um, in order to improve the sound quality since the internet connection is not very well where he is. So he has um, asked us for apologies on that. Um, Pedro, this is an announcement on malaria that possibly you haven't had during your career and also that is something you have been um, together with the team working on making possible for quite some time. Dr. Pedro Alonso is um, the director of the Global Malaria Program at WHO. Pedro, do you want to share a few remarks? Um, sure, Holm. Um, uh, thanks, uh, thanks very much. Uh, the, the remarks are first to acknowledge uh, and thank uh, Dr. Sahin and Tureki for um, um, their leadership and uh, boldness and, um, and uh, good science uh, and uh, prioritizing uh, one of the um, oldest scourge of mankind. Some people say the disease that has killed most, more humans in history, malaria, a disease that um, um, uh, has a really important equity dimension. It uh, affects uh, poor populations. It uh, entraps entire populations and countries in this vicious cycle of disease and poverty. And for a highly successful set of scientists and a company um, uh, to now uh, put their focus on um, bringing their science, their technology, their success, the funding to uh, take on um, uh, malaria is, uh, is, is a dream come, come true. It's, uh, as one of my colleagues in Geneva was saying, what we're hearing today is the, the announcement of, of the moonshot. Um, and, uh, and also the, the fact that they want to do this in, in combination or in partnership with, with, uh, with uh, critical players. Number one, the countries, the affected countries themselves. 
the number two um, key partners like uh, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, the European Investment Bank, um, of course, WHO uh, uh, and others. Um, it, it truly is unprecedented. I've, I've devoted more than 35 years of my professional life to, to the work on malaria. And I, I dare say that this is one of the most exciting times. Also, the amount of time I've spent on malaria tells me that we have to be cautious. The work has just begun. Malaria is a very complex parasite, as uh, Ugur was, was saying earlier on. There are many things we still don't understand about immunity um, induced by this parasite. It's, it's one of the most complex organisms, communicable disease um, organisms that we can, we can think of. And therefore, it won't be necessarily an easy, an easy uh, path. But um, uh, what we're hearing today is um, uh, the, the commitment of the company, of the science, of the partners, of the political entities. Um, and, and that's as good as it could possibly get. I, I'm an optimist. And I'm sure that uh, in a few years' time, we'll look back at this date and um, and um, and acknowledge that it was an extraordinarily important announcement that would perhaps hopefully um, produce a highly efficacious malaria vaccine that works um, for a good numbers of years and that as director general uh, dr tedros said could potentially enable or be a key component for a future eradication effort and our joint vision of, uh, of a malaria-free world. So a, a big thanks uh, on behalf of all of us. Thank you very much, dear Pedro. Chidi in Brazzaville, any closing remark from WHO Afro? Okay. Um, thank you, Holm. And uh, dear colleagues and partners, no, actually very brief closing remarks just to, to appreciate the determination and the commitment that's been expressed today by all those who are involved in um, taking this huge opportunity that, that BioNTech is offering in this technology for malaria in Africa. And uh, to express on behalf of my colleagues here in the region, and on behalf of the people in Africa, our deep appreciation and our absolute determination ourselves to join in this work, it's going to be truly uh, transformative. As somebody who moved 12 years ago from uh, Southern Africa uh, to uh, the Congo, I've suffered several bouts of malaria personally. And of course, I've developed, I think, my own uh, immunity. But I see every day around me in the Congo colleagues other people that we meet here. And um, the impact on people's lives is very visible in a very obvious way, starting from uh, my colleagues, the people who help me in the house, and the impact on everybody's economy, ability to work, and of course, the tragic uh, occasion when deaths occur. It, it's just something that you cannot forget. And, and I'd like to thank uh, all the partners in this initiative and say we will be with you and with our member states every step of the way in terms of the role that WHO in the African region, working with our colleagues, Sumia, Tedros, and others in our headquarters will do to take this forward. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, dear Chidi. So it is now time to move back to Aslam und Ugur to congratulate them very personally and their wonderful team at large and to ask you for a few closing remarks. Yes, I, I can start maybe, Ugo, if you, if you allow. So I would like to, to use this opportunity on behalf of BioNTech and uh, express our gratitude for all those who are involved in, in this initiative. Uh, and uh, will, uh, together with us and others, uh, enable uh, that uh, we all can contribute to eradication of malaria. 
And uh, we think that uh, this is not only the beginning of addressing malaria as a threat, in particular in uh, low income countries, but also the beginning of forming and reinventing public private partnerships uh, and how they are driven, uh, which we think we can together also expand to other regions of the world and other diseases. Yeah, I would also like to thank Holm and uh, everyone here in this in this meeting yeah, uh, for for this um, fantastic program and, and support. What really motivates me, it's the, it is not about organizations working here together. It's about people who are working on this on this challenge for decades like Petro. And we had uh, in the in the in the last last weeks several meetings with each other, and uh, these were exciting meetings. It it made clear how much knowledge is 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 available, yeah? and uh, it uh, pro provided uh, provided us a lot of encouragement that the problem can be scientifically solved, and uh, and if we can solve the problem with innovation and science everything else will fall in place. And, and I'm, I'm really, really optimistic as Petro. We have to be optimistic because this is a huge challenge. Yeah? And that we can make a difference. So thank you so much for allowing us to work with you. So thank you very much, dear Ugo, dear, Sah uh, dear Aslam. This is our privilege to working with you. And we will all try to give you the best possible support. So for those who came in later, let me quickly summarize. Beyond Tech says, we will develop a highly efficient vaccine to fight malaria, and we will manufacture it end to end in Africa. The World Health Organization, Africa Union and CDC applaud and say, this is actually well aligned within our strategies. The European Union, EIB, and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation stand ready to support. And with all of this and the outlook to potentially starting a malaria-free world today, I'd like to thank all the distinguished panelists, all the speakers, to all of you, and we wish you a wonderful remaining of this Monday and an excellent rest of this week. Thank you very much. Best greetings from all of us at CANAP to the rest of the world. Be safe, get vaccinated, and if you can, take the BioNTech vaccine. Bye-bye. <laughs> Good luck. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you.